All right, uh, we got to talk about these shows. We'll start with the Dynamite show. Open up with the next match. Okay, yeah. I, I, a few things on the Dynamite show. So, so I thought I thought the Dynamite show was fantastic. I was actually one of my favorite episodes that they've ever done, and my favorite thing on the show was the Chris Jericho and Action Andretti Andretti match. So the story behind this is that. Um, I don't even know how many weeks ago this was, but um, you could probably look it up. But Action Andretti had a match on one of the streaming shows against QT Marshall. And Chris Jericho was watching the match and decided at that moment that this guy's going to be a star. And so he decided that he was going to make him a star. And this is a ways back. And it was, you know, he had all this stuff to do, the Claudio feud, the you know, these other matches. And they actually, at that point, go, this is when we're going to be outdone with this. And then, like, this di- this match on this date, this was not something where it was decided, like, yesterday. This was weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Um, whatever It was the Andretti and QT match. And they went, and what a fantastic crowd. I mean, the crowd tonight, I mean, it, it you know, it wasn't like the biggest crowd by any means that they've had, but they were hot. They were hot for Ruby Soho and Ty, Con- Ty Mello. They were so hot for Chris Jericho and Action Andrade. It was incredible. They were hot for the Ricky Starks and MJF, which doesn't surprise me because those guys did great promos. But they were hot for everything. And I just thought, like, you know, I mean, this was a great show. So We had Action Andretti and Chris Jericho, which was, as we noted earlier, it was fantastic. It was I knew I knew it fantastic. happened before I watched it. It was still awesome. It and was what fantastic. was great about this is because he said, I'm going to beat up this jobber tonight, the fans at first are, uh, you know, they're just having fun with let's go jobber, let's go jobber. But then Andretti starts getting spots on Chris Jericho. And it was about halfway in when they figured out, wait a second, this jobber's doing some awesome stuff right here. So then... They started really getting into it, and it was like one of those well, they matches were from, where— They were into it from the start. But, well, they but were what, into it, but they were into it like, this actually could be something here, and it's well, not just kicked, some comedy kicked, bullshit thing anymore. Oh, when he kicked out of the code breaker, that's when it set the match going. But the other thing that was so brilliant about this match is, is like, Jericho worked the match like what I would say would be the, the Triple H, Taka Michinoku, or a match where you have— a guy who you know isn't going to win, and you give him a lot of offense, okay? I mean, that match, which it happens quite rarely, but is there's a template for the match that they were doing, and he did that template, okay? Which is, and everybody was waiting for it in the sense that this guy's getting offense. Wow, we really like him. Wow, this is really good, but we know he's going to lose. And then Jericho, like when he went for that um, juice effect, it was just like, oh, there it is. It was like, and no, he ducked it. Well, it was and, like Moxley and Takeshita, where you know now they start booing the idea that Chris Jericho is going to win this match. He starts going for his deal, and they're like, "Boo! We don't want to see you use." It wasn't. This it wasn't. It wasn't guy. even that. It was. It's like they knew. They knew. It's like, okay, this is where he's going to do it. And the same thing with the Boston Crab when he went in there at the end with the, with the Boston Crab. It was like, okay, and then the guy went comes and cradles out of it. And it's like, and then the same thing happened with the juice effect. He ducked the juice effect. Both those times, people were like, okay, this is the finish. And then, you know, he goes in there with that standing shooting star and um, and gets the three count. And the place just went nuts. It was one of the, I mean, it was like one of the biggest pops um, in AEW in, you know, it was probably since like a title change or something. Like a major title. Like, like I don't know. I mean, it was maybe... You know, punk winning in Chicago, or something or whatever. CM Punk. I mean, this was a giant pop, and um, it was just like I said. This match was so brilliantly put together. That was the thing about it, and they also picked the right week to do it because this was the easiest crowd they worked before. They probably could, if they did this match in like Albany, New York, or something, we would just be going like, Whoa, you know, whatever. But but it couldn't have been better. So then Jericho flips his lid backstage, throws stuff around, storms into his locker room, and uh, there is more to come in this yeah. story. Hopefully they can uh, do something with Action Andretti, you know, because uh, they, 
You know, this is this is the exact angle. And I, I do know. not think they did this without a plan to do something with Action Andretti. I'm pretty uh, sure better. the plan is to do a lot with this guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the exact angle that, and I don't even know if Jericho knows it because you know, but he might, you know, because he's a student. But it was also when he was six years old. Um, but this was the angle that George Scott did with to to make Ricky Steamboat against Ric Flair. You know, when Ricky Steamboat was just nobody and he pins Ric Flair in a television match. And then they were off and running and Ricky Steamboat became one of the biggest stars in the history of the Carolinas. And actually, Flair and Steamboat's probably drew more money than maybe any feud ever in that in that part of the country. So, um, you know, it's it's a copy of a it's a copy of something from uh, 46 years ago that worked great 46 years ago. So there you go.